Inflammation can lead to many different health issues. Some people might experience joint pain, others mental fatigue, and again others might be put at a risk for heart diseases, diabetes, or other modern diseases. So when we think of diseases that are connected to inflammation, we usually think of inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory bowel disease. However, new scientific data shows us that it doesn't stop here. We see that most modern diseases such as cancer or Alzheimer's are associated with inflammation. Chronic inflammation can really affect you in many ways you would not even imagine, like influencing your mood. Studies are frequently published that show that, for instance, depression can either be caused or aggravated by increased inflammation. So don't get me wrong here. Generally speaking, inflammation is not a bad thing. It is a protective response of our immune system against anything that could cause harm to our body. And ideally, our immune system recognizes pathogens, damaged cells or toxins and eliminates those with a short burst in inflammation. This is called acute inflammation and is an essential process which keeps us alive when we experience wounding, for instance. However, inflammation can become problematic once it becomes chronic as it can lead to a lot of friendly fire against our own cells. And depending on what you're most susceptible to, this can lead to a variety of issues and attacks your joints, maybe your brain, your heart or any other part of your body. So what causes inflammation? This might vary from person to person, but the general answer here would be diet and stress. Study after study is really showing how western diet leads to low-grade chronic inflammation. Now, a western diet includes many things that can increase inflammation. But for today's video, I want to focus on one thing that probably changed the most in our diet throughout the last 100 years. I'm talking about the ratio of omega-6 fatty acids to omega-3 fatty acids. And I want to show scientific evidence on how fixing this ratio can go a long way in reducing inflammation. So both fatty acids, omega-6 and omega-3, are essential for us meaning that we have to obtain them through our diet to live. Biochemically, they only differ in where the first double bond appears. Omega-3s have the first double bond placed three carbon atoms away from the omega end, while omega-6 have it placed six carbon atoms away. This small molecular difference can make a big physiological difference, as omega-3 fatty acids act anti-inflammatory in our body, while omega-6 fatty acids increase inflammation. And not too long ago, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 in our diet was somewhere between 3 to 1 and 1 to 1. But this changed quite drastically over the last decades. And with the overuse of vegetable oils and the underconsumption of fish and grass-fed animals, we now see ratios closer to 10 to 1 or even 30 to 1. Corn oil, for instance, has a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 of 57 to 1 and other vegetable oils don't really do much better here. But this isn't the end of the story here. Another point to consider is that grain-fed beef has a much higher omega-6 to omega-3 ratio compared to grass-fed natural beef. Another major factor we have to take into consideration is that we humans really suck at converting the plant-derived omega-3 fatty acid to the biological active form, so EPA and DHA. This paper here explains that the conversion of the plant omega-3 to the biological active one is below 5% in humans and depends on the concentration of omega-6 fatty acids and long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids in our diet. This means that we humans can't really rely on getting enough omega-3s from sources like chia seeds or flax seeds. Even though in theory they might provide quite some omega-3, it's not the biological active form we would get from animals, like the EPA and DHA. However, one vegan alternative would be to get it directly from algae or from like supplements that are derived from algae. And again, while things like chia seeds theoretically provide us with a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, it comes from the form of alpha-linolenic acid which still needs to be converted into the bioactive EPA and DHA. And the conversion rate, as I said before, depends also on how much omega-6 you consume, as both fatty acids compete for the same enzymes. Okay, so how much omega-3 should you include in your diet and where should you get it from? 
But according to most mainstream health organizations, the daily recommended intake is set at a minimum of 250 to 500 milligrams. But I found that in most studies, the desired effect only really shows up when we go much higher and have concentrations somewhere between 1.2 grams or 3 grams. How much omega-3 you need likely also depends on your omega-6 intake and your general diet. And I'm not a physician, but my general recommendation would be to start with a high and see if this resolves your issue, whatever it is, and then slowly reduce the dosage and see if the issue returns or not. What worked for me personally to fix my knee pain I had for almost 6 months was an omega-3 intake of about 2 grams for a week and then I could go down to let's say 1 gram daily. However, when I stopped consuming any omega-3 fatty acids and continued doing heavy squats and heavy deadlift, my knee pain unfortunately returned until I start supplementing again or until I started adding a lot of fish again into my diet. So getting enough omega-3s into your diet is not that hard. At least if you like fish. Here's a list of foods high in omega-3. Just don't forget that the seeds and nuts contain alpha-linolenic acid, or short ALA, which only inefficiently is converted to EPA and DHA. So eating about 100 grams of white cod salmon every other day will provide you with more than enough omega-3s. Also, if you hate fish or you simply cannot afford it on a regular base, you might want to look into fish oil supplements or cod liver oil. Cheers. However, I would recommend to get a high quality product here as fish oil is susceptible to oxidation by light or by heat. And therefore, I would also recommend to get some antioxidant or polyphenol rich foods on the side like olive oil, blueberries or dark chocolate. Again, fixing your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is just one approach in reducing inflammation. Try to calculate your ratio for a couple days and then adjust it accordingly and see if this resolves your issue. As always, I have all the references in the description. Thank you for watching, please consider subscribing and see you next time.